Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Tuesday, November the 28th. I'm Rafi Boyajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be having a look at what's happening in the currency markets today. The US dollar has managed to come off yesterday's lows, uh, although trading remains subdued uh, uh, this morning. Uh, we have the Senate Budget Committee hearing uh, later in the day, uh, where the, the, the committee members will decide whether or not uh, the, the Senate tax plan should move on to the Senate floor for a vote. Uh, the Fed is also in focus today and also the rest for the rest of the week. Uh, we have uh, Fed Chair nominee Jerome Powell um, having his confirmation hearing in Congress. Yellen will have his semi, her semi-annual testimony uh, tomorrow and we've got a number of Fed speakers lined up uh, for today and the rest of the week. So uh, we're going to be hearing a lot by policy Fed policymakers. Uh, the euro and the pound uh, are steady near their multi-week highs. They're off their highs from yesterday uh, but not too far away uh, from those peaks. Uh, the Kiwi though ha- is extending its gains today though the Australian dollar isn't faring so well. Uh, it has pulled back this morning uh, and we're seeing oil prices uh, sharply down uh, as that pipeline between Canada and the US restarts Uh, and we are seeing some uh, doubts about whether or not OPEC and non-OPEC countries will manage to uh, uh, agree to extend the current deal by a further nine months when they meet on Thursday. Let's start though first uh, with the US dollar. We can see uh, dollar yen. Um, Yesterday it did hit a 10 week low 110.83 it's managed to move back above 111 the dollar index yesterday hit a nine week low of 92.496 uh, it's up to this morning uh, just below uh, the 93 uh, level uh, both remain below their 21 uh, moving uh, exponential moving averages uh, and we can see that uh, this, we have that this downtrend has been in place for much of uh, the the past uh, months, uh, mainly on the back of um, uncertainty about what's happening with the tax plan uh, as we move closer to the um, Senate's decision on whether or not they will uh, have a vote on it, and then even if, if they do have a vote on it, whether there's going to be enough of a uh, re- enough Republican support to uh, see it through. Um, but today the focus will be on Jerome Powell. He's already published his uh, prepared remarks uh, ahead of uh, his hearing where he will likely be confirmed uh, by Congress as the next Fed chair uh, beginning in uh, February when Yellen's term expires. Uh, and his views are very much aligned with Yellen uh, with the only uh, differentiation be- being uh, that um, Powell uh, is, is Powell supports uh, some loosening of the regulatory burden on uh, financial institutions in the U.S. following the uh, that tightening of regulation we saw after the financial crisis. Uh, we had a couple of Fed speakers uh, already uh, making appearances at uh, well late U.S. Uh, time, uh, early Asian hours. Uh, we had New York Fed President William Dudley. Uh, he was. Uh, slightly hawkish. He said that he's not confirmed about inflation being below target and wants rates to continue being raised gradually. Uh, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashgar, we know that he's a dove. Uh, he maintained his dovish views, saying that uh, there's no need to tap the brakes when inflation is running uh, so low. Um, and we can see here uh, in the chart the, the, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 um, both indices include and also the Nasdaq yesterday managed to hit um, record intraday highs uh, despite the fact that we can see during November we did have a bit of a pullback although they have uh, both indices have recovered uh, close to those uh, record levels again uh, but overall uh, it hasn't been it's been the weakest months for equities uh, given the uncertainty around the tax plans um, and um, also some uh, renewed anxiety concerning China uh, in recent days. Uh, yesterday, stocks did, didn't do too badly because there was a short-lived boost from uh, a tweet by President Trump saying that the tax plan is coming along very well. Uh, but it has emerged, though, that two Republicans in the Senate Budget Committee uh, are at the moment planning to vote against the bill moving to the Senate floor uh, if, if they do go ahead and uh, oppose uh, the um, the, t- the current form of the t- Senate tax plan. Uh, the, the vote in the Senate might get delayed uh, 
uh, to next week or the week after or possibly uh, to 2018. Uh, another concern is the uh, upcoming deadline on December 8th of the government the current government spending plan, uh, it expires on December the 8th. President Trump is meeting with Republican and Democrat congressional leaders today in an attempt to avert a government shutdown, uh, which is also something that could be negative uh, for the markets. Uh, we are seeing uh, some Im improvement in risk appetite this morning. We can see gold has pulled back from yesterday's six-week high of just below $1,300 uh, an ounce. Uh, the main concern is um, the sell-off in Chinese stocks. Uh, the CSI 300 and the Shenzhen Shanghai Composite Index uh, have fallen significantly since last Thursday. Uh, the CSI 300 down by 4% and the Shenzhen Shanghai down by 3%. Uh, although uh, today, initially, we did see sharp losses. They quickly reversed hard uh, during, uh, just before the close of the day uh, to close slightly uh, up. So that is causing some anxiety in the region and globally uh, as well, although so far the spillover appears to me to be limited. We also had some uh, renewed concerns about a North Korean uh, ballistic missile test uh, following some reports yesterday. So that also contributed to the risk aversion yesterday, although this morning um, we are seeing um, some return to uh, risk uh, appetite. Moving on to European currencies, uh, both the pound and the euro have been benefiting from the weaker greenback. The euro yesterday hit a two month high, $1.1960. Uh, we're seeing uh, robust eurozone economic data. Uh, we had very strong PMIs and IFO, Germ IFO survey data from Germany. Uh, and also uh, in Germany, the SBT and the CDU are moving closer towards uh, having coalition talks, uh, something which would avert fresh elections and would keep Angela Merkel in power. So that's also been positive for the euro. The pound, uh, on the other hand, is being boosted by optimism uh, that a deal between the UK and the EU will be struck before the December uh, EU summit, uh, where it's crucial that the talks move on to trade and a transition deal. Otherwise, uh, the prolonged uncertainty uh, could lead to a sharp uh, drop uh, in the uh, British pound. The main sticking board point at the moment between the talks uh, in terms of a Brexit a divorce deal uh, is the what to do with the border between Ireland and Northern Ireland uh, because uh, both sides want to uh, avoid um, a hard border after Brexit, but that's proving uh, to be very complicated. Also, we could have a snap election in Ireland, which could further uh, complicate uh, the talks uh, in the coming uh, weeks. At the moment, uh, you can see pound is just slightly off yesterday's eight-week high, $1.3382. Uh, a quick look at the Australian and New Zealand dollars because yesterday the Aussie managed to rise to two week high of 0 0.7644, uh, but is back down again this morning as the the US dollar is attempting a rebound. Uh, this, the main uh, pressure, downside pressure on the Australian dollar is the narrowing uh, yield spread between uh, between uh, Aussie and US um government bond yields. The New Zealand dollar, though, uh, is uh, ex extending its gains this morning. It hit a fresh two and a half week high of 0 0.6944 against the greenback, though th there was no fundamentals driving that. It was mainly on the back of short covering. Uh, so markets are pretty much expecting the Kiwi uh, to have further lower over the coming weeks. Uh, and like the it's also the counterpart, the Kiwi has also been under underperforming due to the narrowing yield spread uh, with the uh, US. Uh, and finally, in commodities oil prices, we can see uh, it's down fairly sharply from yesterday's, uh, from last week's rather two-year highs of uh, just above $59 uh, an ounce. Um, we are seeing uh, the restart of the Keystone pipeline between Canada and the US. That was the main reason why we saw a, sh uh, a big rally in US crude prices last week. Uh, that shutdown, which affected uh, out, uh, which affected supply coming into the US. Uh, that the the restart of that pipeline means that we're now seeing those gains being um, reversed. But we also have some 
uh, concerns about whether or not OPEC and some non-OPEC countries such as Russia will be able to agree to an extension of the current output deal when they meet on Thursday. There are reports that Russia is no longer as committed as it was before. So we could uh, either see, uh, ex say, potentially uh, an extension of six months rather than nine months or the, for output to be cut by a much smaller amount than in the current agreement. Uh, or possibly they might postpone a decision until later on, given that we still have some time away till uh, March uh, 2018 when the current deal uh, expires. Uh, looking at today's economic calendar, um, we don't have too much major data. The main focus in the US session uh, will be the Fed Chair nominee uh, Jerome Powell's confirmation hearing. Uh, FOMC member Patrick Harker will also be speaking at 15.15 GMT. Uh, and a speech by Bank of Canada Governor Stephen Pollos might also attract some attention at 16.30 uh, GMT. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.